Hey, this is David for Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to talk about plotting your own custom candles on TradingView using PineScript. And we are going to share with you a very simple script. I've already published it, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But the first thing you're going to have to learn is to hide the built in candles on the TradingView chart. And it's actually very simple. And the reason you're going to have to do that is because when you add the custom candles to your chart, it's going to be overlapping or in this case it looks like it's underneath of the built-in indicators so I'm going to hide the custom ones and show you how to remove the built-in ones just go to the settings for your chart and then you need to uncheck the bodies and I changed the color of the borders just so you could get an idea of what the, that element actually is on the chart because by default you probably don't really tell that it's actually there so uncheck the borders you can see those are now gone and then also uncheck the wicks so now none of the built-in candles are plotted on the chart you can actually show your custom candles using the script now the script itself is actually very simple there's really only one line of code that handles plotting the actual candles and that's because it's just a single function but in order to plot that we have to calculate our own open high low and close otherwise what's the point of using your own custom candles in that case so what I've done is I've created these custom candles based on the whole moving average that's why I call them the whole candles uh, there are two settings for these whole candles there is a length and a closed length. The length is the length for the whole moving average used to calculate the values. And then the closed length is just for a simple moving average used to plot the closing price on the chart. And by default, it's set to one. That way, you're always looking at the closed price of the actual candle. Uh, because we're not plotting both sets of candles on the chart at once, and these candles that we're creating uh, by custom aren't necessarily uh, representative of the actual values of the candles they might be good for finding trends so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to plot those candles but we also want to plot the actual price that way we know what's actually going on even though we aren't looking at the regular candles so our close price on our custom candles is different than the actual close price on the candles and we can use the difference in those to maybe find a trend. So that's just an example of how you can actually use it. And you can see I've calculated the open, high, low, and close down here. These are just all whole moving averages respective of their properties using the 10 period length by default. So we've calculated our O, C, H, and L here in that order. And I've also calculated a whole moving average for the O, H, L, C, four using the same HMA length. And the reason I've done that is because I wanted to see the trend by calculating this. Because when you're using whole moving averages, your values can uh, cross up and down. Those are just moving averages. So in order to find an actual trend, I needed to track one particular value instead of trying to keep up with all four of them. Well, we kind of are keeping up with all four of them, but what we're doing is we're just using that built-in OHLC4 and getting its whole moving average to determine which way the trend is. And you can see we set the body of our candles, that color, uh, to green when that OHLC4 whole moving average is greater than its last value. So when the OHLC4 is moving up, the candles are green. When the OHLC4 whole moving average is going down, the candles are red. So the trend here that I'm highlighting is up. That means the OHLC4 is rising in all of these candles. And you can see the actual price relative to the candles plotted using those whole moving averages. And you can just kind of think of these candles as kind of like a ribbon. Uh, although you're not actually looking at a ribbon, uh, you're actually looking at uh, those candles just in a different relationship than you normally would with the actual price. So it's kind of an odd concept the way I've done this, but the whole point was just to show you how to plot your own custom candles. And really all you need to do is calculate your OHLC OHLC, and I almost said OHLC4, OHLC4 again, excuse me, and you also need to determine the body color of your candles and then you can plot your candles using the plot candle function now I've also used the plot function again for that closing price but uh, the plot candle function is very simple I'll go ahead and pull that up in the reference manual 
and there's a few other features to it that I didn't show you or aren't a part of that script. I am going to show you those now though. So let's see, that is actually plot bar. I need to go to plot candle. We'll talk about plot bar in just a moment. Uh, on plot candle, you can see we've passed in our OHLC. We've given it a title and we've given it a color, but you can also give it a wick color. You can also give it a border color. You can also tell it whether its style is editable. You can show the last certain number of candles only, or you can totally just remove the display of it entirely. So the wick color and the border color are pretty self-explanatory. We talked about those elements earlier, uh, the borders and the wicks. So that's kind of what those are. If you're curious about that, you can play around with it on your own. But the editable, that references whether or not the style is editable. So you go to the settings for your indicator and this would not be editable if you set the editable property equal to false. And that's a hard word to say over and over. Now the show last, that's exactly what it sounds like. It'll only show the last X number of candles that you define. So if you wanted to show the last two candles only, it would just show these two. And finally, the display, if you set that to display.none, it wouldn't show anything. Otherwise, it defaults to display.all and it shows everything. So it's actually pretty simple uh, stuff to consider. But one thing you also need to note uh, are these remarks down here. They're actually pretty important, uh, especially when I did my calculations, because with like a ribbon type calculation, the way I'm doing this, um, the high, the HMA of the high, isn't necessarily always uh, going to be the highest value. And I know it sounds kind of silly, but if I had used another uh, something else on here, and in this case, probably the high, the HMA of the high is probably going to be higher than all the other ones every single time, but that might not be the case if you were doing something else. So just keep in mind that even if one value of open, high, low, or close is equal to not a number, then the bar doesn't draw. So if you put in, uh, if you have a calculation or you forget to pass in an OHLC, it's not going to plot the uh, candle itself. Now, this is the one that I was really trying to get to, the maximal value of open, high, low, or close. So even if you told your candle that your low was the highest value out of your OHLC uh, properties, then the low would actually be set as your high. So it would be uh, very weird, but at the same time, the low is also set to the lowest value, the minimal value of all of those as well. So it kind of figures out the top and the bottom of the candle for you on its own, uh, just kind of figuring out where the actual uh, body of the candle starts and ends is still kind of subject there, but finding the top and the bottom, which is very important uh, when you're passing in this information, uh, it does that very well. So just something to keep in mind if your calculations are different. Now I also talked about plotting custom bars and that's actually really simple. Um, in this case we can just change our function to plot bar. I can save that and it'll convert it to a bar plot and uh, you can see that here it's not necessarily my favorite. So I'm going to switch it back to candles but Really, it's pretty much the same thing as plotting candles. Just go to the pine strip reference manual, and I kind of hinted at this foreshadowed, perhaps. Uh, the function is just above plot candle in the reference manual. You can see all this stuff here. It's pretty much the same thing, except there aren't borders and there aren't wicks. You just have a color. Uh, otherwise, for the most part, it's pretty much the same thing, including the remarks of the tops and the bottoms of the bars. So. I think that will do it for this particular uh, script and showing you how to do custom candles and custom bars. But if you want to see this script, you want to actually use this script, you can actually go to my profile on TradingView. It should be in the description of the video. Click on scripts and you should be able to find that script here. You should also probably be able to search for it in the public library when you go to add an indicator. Uh, but it might not be indexed just quite yet. So uh, yeah, it's just in my scripts right now. So it may or may not be available by the time the video is published on YouTube, but it should be available in the public library. If not, you should always be able to find it on my TradingView profile. You can go there and you can find the source code uh, there as well. And while you're there, go ahead and like the script, please. That helps a whole lot. Um, other than that, 
check out the Pine Script Reference Manual. That does it for the video. And while you're thinking about liking the whole script, uh, like the video too, please. That'll help a lot uh, while you're thinking about likes. That uh, seems to make sense. But uh, also, if you've liked the video, uh, that's another good reason to like it. But if you've watched this video so far, and I assume you would like it if you've watched it this far. Otherwise, you probably just forgot about it. Uh, playing in the background somewhere but uh, if you haven't and you've actually watched the video please subscribe because if you've watched it this far through you'll probably like some of the other videos we do where we do pine script tutorials we keep up to date with new features on trading view new features in the pine script code so when they update that we'll uh, cover that so you'll know what's actually going on uh, with trading view and with pine script as well so uh, i'd like to thank you for watching the video but uh, yeah that'll do it thanks and have a great day